And this little short video post is not so much for my church folks here in Fresno and other folks who have tuned in, the little things that I've shared. Appreciate that. Um, but this is more for my colleagues and peers in ministry. It sure seems like something is happening as we're shifting to online church. Something is afoot. I mean, God is doing something, and I'm trying to figure out what's going on, and I'm sure you are too. For those of us who are trying to do online church and doing it decently, I think we're seeing something, we're learning something, and we need to be talking together about what it is. So, like I noticed just recently, somebody shared a statistic says that you should take the number of online viewers, multiply that by 2.5, because there's more than one person usually sitting at a computer watching your service or in front of the TV screen. Multiply that by 2.5, and that's the number of, of attendees you had for your church service. That sounds great. Um, so that means that Easter service here at the College Church, we had five times the number of normal attendees um, in our Easter service. You can probably tell by my face that I'm a little skeptical. I don't quite think those numbers are entirely accurate. So while I think that there's probably some overinflation of because people maybe visit a site and they disappear, uh, they don't stay and watch the whole service. So I think there's a little bit uh, too positive of a spin being given to some of these things, but I do think something's happening. And as I talk to many of my peers across the spectrum, Protestant, Catholic, Evangelical, um, Pentecostal, I hear similar things. They're having big numbers of people who they know are engaging and talking and watching. What's going on? So I just want to think real quickly some things that I think from where I sit, what's happening. And I'm curious to hear from you. Please share back with me whether or not what I'm saying resonates with you or whether or not you're hearing something different that needs to get out there because we all need to learn what God's up to so that we can just not go back to business as usual once this is over. We can figure out how we need to be uh, really about the mission of God in this changing world. Okay, quickly, four reasons why I think there truly is a bump in numbers. First of all, and I could talk about each of these for four or five minutes, but I'm gonna try to do them quickly. First of all, I think there's a bump in numbers because it makes it easier for people to come back to church. And when I'm talking about this category, I'm talking about folks who in recent years have left church, not those who got their feelings hurt, because that's kind of a special group that probably never comes back. But I'm talking about those who left because they, they drew lines in the sand about doctrinal issues or they've gotten kind of disgusted about uh, maybe the dominant group in your church, where they think politically and they speak <laughs> politically about things over coffee and you know, between class and worship. So I think this, this makes it easier for those people to come back. They, they didn't ever really want to leave church, but they just kind of had to for the sake of their own sanity and well-being. So this is making it easier for them to come back. Second, I think this is making it easier for people to check out church. Now, there have always been people who are making resolutions every year. This is the year I'm going to go to church. This is the year I'm going to go back to church, whether they're de-churched or unchurched. This is the year. I'm... But it just is hard to go from wanting to go to church to actually driving in the parking lot, getting out of your car, coming in the church building, trying to decide where to sit. Those things are difficult to do. That's a huge barrier to overcome. And this online platform makes it easier for people to check out church. So that's a second reason I think it is. People are checking out church. Number three, I think this whole online church platform is making it easier for some people to focus and hear. I'm hearing this a lot, is that the fact that I'm just right front and center in this screen, I mean, they can see and hear me so much more clearly. It's like they suddenly are hearing some things that I'm saying better than they have in an auditorium filled with other people and there's distraction, there's things happening. There's lots of distractions at home too, I get it. But you can pause, you can rewind. It's fascinating, but I'm hearing that there is more interest simply because you can focus and hear better. Fourth of all, I think this online platform is making it easier for those who need flexibility. We have a lot of people these days who have different issues, concerns, whether it's health concerns or just simply life concerns or just you know, family things, work things. And church, I know a lot of churches are trying to do their best to be flexible for the different needs. I mean, churches offer different kinds of services. They offer different times of services. But you just can't meet every need. You can't do a service to fit every need. And the thing about online church is that it scales to a much more diverse audience. I mean, you can get up at 11 and watch. You can do it at 
10 p.m. you can watch. You can sit in your pajamas and watch. You know, there's just so many different ways that you yourself as an individual, as a family, can participate in church without having to do the one-size-fits-all kind of church or even two sizes for everybody. So I think these four things, it's easier to come back, it's easier to check out church, it's easier to focus in here, and it's easier to be, for us as providers of this church gathering, of our worship service, to provide flexibility for those who need it. Now, real quickly as I end, I do think there are three reasons for caution. I don't think we should jump to some quick conclusions uh, because I think uh, that this bump might be largely due to channel surfing. This is what I do with college football in the fall a lot of times. I'll watch a game for a little bit and then I'll see a score pop up and I'll be interested in turning over that game. I do think there are a number of people who are watching multiple church services or they're tuning in for five minutes to see what happens and then leaving. And those numbers probably turn up in your count. So the fact that people are channel surfing doesn't necessarily mean that they're engaging. So that's just something to consider. That's a word for caution. A second thing is that virtual reality is a kind of reality, but is it fulfilling? I mean, I think that there are a lot of questions and certainly there are people who have done studies about this. Virtual reality does provide some of the, the, the things that we need but there's still something at the end of that that's lacking. So I just kind of wonder how long virtual reality can really fill the needs that we as human beings have. So, you know, going all in on that, you know, may be a little tricky. Just, just a word for caution, I'm not saying that's or a stop sign. And number three, I think the biggest concern for us as church leaders is if you're seeing a bump, fine, but can you shepherd those who are tuning in? This may provide real opportunities for us as churches to engage with a bigger audience. But if we're not shepherding the people who are tuning in, then are they really a part of our church? So this calls for strong leadership. This calls for shepherding leadership. This calls for engagement. And if our churches are poised to be able to shepherd and to connect with people, then I think this can really mean something. But the word of caution is, that if you're not poised as a church to really shepherd and reach out, then I think this is uh, gonna be a flash in the pan. So let me know your thoughts. I'm really curious what you're hearing. We're just trying to listen together to what God's up to so that we can join God in the mission that God is calling us to. Have a great day.